Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another unboxing video for you today. And yes, it is another Hinder unboxing. Um, I've got a bit of a problem. Uh, I've, I have, this is my third Hinderer now that I currently own, my fifth total of actual real Hinderers, which they're not inexpensive. Um, and I've also owned several of his designs. I still have a ZT0562 tie, one of my favorite Definitely my favorite all-time ZT and one of my favorite all-time knives, period. Love that thing. A couple of those other designs that he did for Kershaw and stuff. Um, remember a couple of years ago I did a little, little thing? I don't know if I said it in a podcast or on the live show or whatever, but I remember saying uh, not really interested in anything that Rick Hender is designing because they're big and bulky and I don't like them. Well, um, I believe the technical term is that I was wrong. Or maybe my taste just changed, but I would say no, I, I was just wrong. Um, and also I wasn't into more expensive stuff and in the channel has kind of evolved towards not budget stuff, but not usually stuff quite this expensive, but it's fun to take a little, little veer off to a slicey dicey pricey knifey and show some more expensive things. This is a USMA blade exclusive. And what makes it a USMA blade exclusive is it is a half track Warncliffe. Uh, only place you can get the warning is from USMA blade. So Make sure to go check them out. And I wanted to get this video up quickly. I was actually planning on doing something else today, but these are still available. There's still quite a wide selection of them on usmablade.com. And they are going to be, when they're gone, they're gone. And they're not going to last long. A lot of them have some of their cool own custom anno packages on them. And a lot of them are just plain stock. What's nice is if you want a plain stock one, but you do want to tweak something a little bit, anodize the screws, anodize the, you know, the lock side, whatever, uh, they do that for free. So this is a $425, yes, pretty pricey, base hinder half track, but it is anodized. I did not get it custom anodized. They anodized some just to have in stock. And this happened to be just exactly the color I was going to get anodized anyway. So this is the one I went for. Thank you very much to my buddy Emilio for making sure I got my hands on one of these before they were gone. So let's get going. Let's get the box open so you can see what this looks like. Two, two minutes and 10 seconds in, he hasn't showed it yet. Oh my. I already see the main feature of it. Yes, it is bronze. Get this out of the bag. Ah, the box. Yeah, nothing impressive. We got the unboxing. You should show the box, I guess. Uh, Hinder sticker. Who hand assembled it, which it looks like Kim Johnson. And the other different washers in here. This has the triway pivot. This is Gen 2. So you have your... Uh, Phosphor bronze and Teflon washers if you want to use one of them instead. They always come with the bearings in them, and that's what I always use. I think on my old XM18 3-inch, I used the Phosphor bronze for like a week and then went right back to the bearings. But here we go. The bronze, this is the pretty side on this particular one. The other side also bronze, the black G10. Very aggressive G10. I do not like when Hinderer uses the G10 on both sides, uh, this aggressive. I have my Eclipse, you'll see in a moment, that's G10 on both sides, but it's not nearly this aggressive texture. Uh, but when it's on one side, I really like it. But yeah, the liner lock ones and the, the, the liner lock XM18 and the, um, the, X, the XM18 skinny and the XM18 slippy both have it on both sides and it's just pocket destroyer. But uh, oh, this is pretty really really like this if i would have custom ordered it i may have had the hardware done bronze as well but witty and those guys are great to deal with i'm sending uh my southern grind spider monkey down to get the bronze liners done on it anyway so it's an option they offer from their their site so i might send the hardware for this along with that and just have it all done all at once but maybe not i don't know it still looks pretty cool just the way it is can't really complain let's flip this sucker open to show what makes it Exclusive, the Warncliffe blade, and it's a very unique Warncliffe blade too. It's a very upswept Warncliffe, uh, which is which is nice because when you put it down, I bet, yeah, it doesn't quite completely clear the flipper tab, but you can get a bit more, a bit more surface area to cut on flat surfaces than you do with a lot of warnings that have the flipper tabs on them. So, kind of understand what it and a packaging thing too. I think it was to get it in there, but it, it looks cool. I really do like it. I'm sure it is as sharp as can be. Do we have some uh, paper around here? Let's see, here's some other stuff that I was using for stuff before. Yield printer test. Yep. Very slicey. They always have great edges, of course, because it's a hinderer. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a very, very nice knife. I really missed having a half track around. Uh, I had a 
full titanium 20 CV Spanto, which was also a USMA blade exclusive. They are long since gone, uh, but it was over 600 bucks and I just uh, I couldn't justify keeping it around anymore. And it was at the time when I was really trying to get the channel going a lot more and I really, I'd sold it to buy some more stuff to review. And I've always missed having a half track and saw the Warney. I love Warren Cliffs. Had, had to try one. And so I got this one in more of a working carry sort of thing. Stonewash blade, G10, you know, pretty basic other than the anno. And I'm probably not going to do too much modification on this. Like I said, I might anno the screws, but other than that, I'm just going to keep it like it is and use it. 425 is not cheap for a user. I'm not saying that, but I uh, don't want to make it sound like I'm being a snob, but it's better than 650. Only one position pocket clip on this one. Just tip up right hand only. That's it. You can usually do tip up, tip down, but this is just tip up, which don't mind that because that's why I'm going to carry it anyway. And I really like this forward. Yeah, I thought so from looking at it. This forward choil feels a lot, a lot more usable than it did on my Spanto. I really like that because obviously it's very pretty small knife, as you'll see when we get to specs and size comparisons. I can't quite get four fingers on it holding it in a more conventional position, but definitely can choked up, and it's definitely got enough room for me to do that. So liking that. And I put the sticker aside only because it's shiny, not because it's not cool, and not because you should not go to usmablade.com and go buy you one of these or any of the other cool stuff that he has. It's not just hinders. It's obviously all USA made stuff, but go check them out. They're, they've always been really great to us and our giveaways and everything, and great just to get stuff to me to review. And Woody is just an awesome guy. I'm recording this on a Thursday. They do a live show on their Instagram on Thursday nights, and I will um, absolutely be hanging out there tonight, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern time, to a brag because I got another hinderer. So let's do some specs, and then we're going to bring out some more hinderers, and I'm going to brag some more. Uh, we have an overall length of 6.5 inches. Blade length is 2.75. Uh, cutting edge is more like 2.5. Uh, you have a blade thickness of 0 0.16 handle thickness of 0.52 inches and a weight of 4.2 ounces. Now I'm reading some of those stats off from their website and off of USMA Blades website and some of them are off of uh, my previous hinderer uh, half track. I know the blade thickness is the same. I'm assuming the handle thickness is the same but those were the measurements I got from my old one. So let's just do it. Why not? We can just do it live. Just make sure I was right. Yep. 0.16. I knew that was going to be the same. Is the handle the same? Yeah, 0 0.52. And they do have full tie versions of this available as well if you want the full tie, especially in the, that Battle Black, which I'm going to show you in a moment because um, I have a XM18 of Amelia who's here to do some work on that uh, is the Battle Black. So you'll be able to see that finish too if you want it. All right, size comparisons. Bust out some more hinders. These two, these first two are mine. This is the full size XM18 with the Warhog scale. That was a lovely gift from Amelia, which I very much appreciate. And uh, the other one of mine, I think one of the most underrated hinderers. Uh, you have the Eclipse 3.0 or 3 inch, whichever you want to call it. You see, it's a little bit smaller than the Eclipse and way smaller than the full size 3.5 inch XM18. Now, this next one, like I said, is one I got coming in for work, but you can see the size and also just the um, that battle black finish is really cool. I wish I had gone with that now. No, not really. I like the bronze a lot too. But uh, yeah, this is really cool. Um, you can see it's even still a bit smaller than the 3-inch XM18. It's a pretty short little knife, but it doesn't feel that way. Just the way it fills your hand, it feels so much bigger than it is. And I think that's one of the things I love the most about the half track. It feels every bit a big bruisey hinderer, but it isn't. It's a, it's a small little thing. And now at 4.2 ounces, yeah, it's well above that ounce per inch thing we always talk about, but it's still a very reasonable weight. They're never hard to get your hand past. At least my old one wasn't. Let's uh, put it in the Yield Wranglers Mark II. Yeah, they're not too bad to carry at all. Not bad at all. I remember my old one, I had one pair of jeans that it was really hard to get in and out of, get my hand past in and out of. But other than that, that was always fine. You can feel the flipper tab a bit. Not obnoxious. I'm probably not going to do a full review on this um, because uh, I do plan on doing one, because probably by the time I do it, they're going to be gone. You've you got to go, again, usmablade.com. They have, I think there was like, look about 15 of them in stock, maybe something like that when I just looked. And when they're gone, they're gone. So go check those out in their various configurations. But I am going to do a little kind of, uh, 
buyer's guide, I guess you'd call it. Not a battle to the death, but sort of a little buyer's guide between this Eclipse 3 inch and the XM18 3 inch. I used to own one of these. Um, and just to kind of say what I like about each, what I don't like about each, which one, because these are a big investment. Uh, a hinder is a big investment. So you want to make sure you get it right the first time. So maybe a little bit of buyer's advice for that. So we'll do that um, very shortly. Maybe next week-ish. I think I have a whole next week I could I could use for it. But um, a couple more little size comparisons. We'll move on. We have your Ontario Rat Model 2. A little bit smaller than that. What else do we have here? Para 3 Lightweight. A little bit smaller than that. And, oh, why not? We happen to have them out here because it was yesterday's video. And I have not put all my knives away yet today. So we have your... Benchmade Mini Bug Out, and the it's very similar in length to the Mini Bug Out, and your full size Bug Out. All right, yeah, really cool. And again, jump on them, man. If you want one, when they're gone, they're gone. And Woody never tells a lie. I asked him because I was really worried if I'd be able to get one. I'm like, are you going to be getting more of those in sometime later on? Like, you know, after the tax man pays me. And he was like, nope. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> so glad I got the one I wanted. It's really great. Again, I might anodize the hardware, but I don't know. Really looking forward to just using it. It's just going to go in my pocket immediately, like right now. I already took the knife out of my pocket. I had in my pocket before I started this, because I know this is just going straight in there. And, uh, yeah, I have a hinderer issue. I have a hinderer problem, uh, definitely, without a doubt. But, you know, as problems go, you know, it's better than drugs, probably, depending on the drug. Don't do drugs. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.